I'm Zachary Fowler and you're watching my extra channel and today we got a huge haul from Solo Stove. They sent us all the goodies that you can imagine including our two competitors for today's smokeless fire pit championship. The big Yukon 2.0 with the cast iron griddle or the slightly smaller Bonfire 2.0 with the cast iron wok. I set these two stainless steel pits up in different situations and cook a few meals for my family so I can report back my thoughts about their ease of use, fire feel, ambiance, and cookability. Then share which I think is your best bet depending on your needs. So let's unbox these and see how they work. I was looking at getting ready for doing another channel called um, Fowler Catch and Cook. And we're gonna do that with a catch and cook kitchen up here. You've heard me mention that before on my other channel, Followers Maker and Mischief, right? So I wanted something for an outdoor catch and cook kitchen as well at the land with the tiny house. And I said, hey guys, over at Solo Stove, like, like I do all kinds of stuff that would be perfect for your Solo Stoves. And I, cause I just saw that they had cooktops for them. So far right now, they sent me everything for the uh, Solo Stove Yukon. And we also got the Solo Stove Bonfire and all of the, uh, tools and or gadgets and gizmos that go along with that. Griddle and hub. Griddle and hub. I'm probably gonna set up one of these here at the house for with the family and for videos, and then one of these at the tiny house over there. I mean, this one looks like it's big, and this will be perfect for entertaining a bunch of guests. Sticker, put a sticker with our sticker collection. There. When I first get something, I try to always set it up without the instructions and that tells me how, to a degree, how well something was designed. I'm guessing that's probably for ash clean out at the bottom there. That doesn't look like that goes like that. Oh. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I bet you I figured it out without the instructions. Does it lock in? Yep, it locks in. And also, if you look at the little picture down here, it does show that it's sitting up on that. Checking our work with the instructions, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, we nailed it. Nailed it. That's easy. Oh, well, there's something we says we must read before using. Are for outdoor use only. Wow. I, I would not think you'd have to say that a fire pit is for outdoor use only. People must think like, oh, it's smokeless. Uh, I heard that it was smokeless. I'm going to put it in my living room and warm my house maybe or something. That would consume all the oxygen in the room and you'd suffocate and die if you didn't just burn the house straight down somehow. One tip here, one thing here is don't use water to put out your fire. Putting water on hot metal would cause for sure this thing to warp and twist and crack and you'd ruin it instantly. So it's put together right, we didn't even need the instructions and now we're ready to unbox some more stuff so that we can do some cooking. Let's get the griddle out. Oh, this is what I'm excited about. Look at the size of this thing. Look at the size of that. Oh my goodness. Stays in there nicely, good and sturdy. Caution, those are hot. That's why they sent these little silicone grips. A little mat that goes with it. So when we want to take it off, then we're done cooking, take a break. Put it into the hole, lift up. Oh, easy carry. That's nice. And then you grab your ring, move it. They don't. That's kind of a really cool thing about this. Nice poker and hooker for wood. Nice long tongs. Because this is smokeless, that fire is gonna be super hot. A little roll up of little kebab tongs. A flame lid for it. There we go, that's kinda nice. And some grill tools. Flipping our chicken, flipping our burgers. All right, let's uh, head down to the land. Cook some food for the family tonight. The Yukon being the first one I have ever started a fire in, I found it to be extremely easy. 
We're not gonna go too deep into the footage of the cooking and stuff because that's in my earlier video on Fowler's Makery and Mischief where I did the striper catch and cook. So if you'd love to see the full romantic cook, make sure you check that out there on my other channel. When it comes to starting a fire in these, it's just as easy as starting it in a regular fire pit. Start small, you got your little fire starter. In this case, I'm using my Wazoo fire starter necklace just to spark up a piece of birch bark and some small kindling. The solo stoves aren't magic, so you still have to use good materials. If you go and put a bunch of rotten stuff in there that doesn't want to burn, until the fire is up to temperature, you're not gonna get that smokeless effect. But if you pick some nice dry wood, your fire will be up to temp in a matter of, I think it took me two minutes, and I was ready to put the griddle on top and start cooking. The very nature of the solo stove getting so warm to put a, such a clean, smokeless fire out means that the thing is also very hot all the way around. But I feel like that's common sense. You don't put your hand on a hot pan, you don't lean on a hot wood stove, you don't lean on a hot fireplace hot things burn and this thing burns hot and very clean which makes the cooking a little bit of a challenge this first cook I realized you really got to keep moving that thing gets so hot so fast but it does such a great job at searing and cooking the corn on the side was awesome I really love this giant flat griddle for the Yukon I was able to cook enough food for five people in like five minutes and everything was hot and able to be served all at the same time because that space was so big. So for my first time ever using a solo stove and that large griddle at the same time, I feel like I kinda nailed it. All right, hon, dinner's ready. Now let's unbox its slightly smaller little brother, the Bonfire 2.0. Oh, wow. This one's the walk. Well, it wins an assembly award. It assembles in three seconds. Oh, that's how you cheat when you're at home. Waxed cardboard from the grocery store. And then if you have a wife who makes wreaths out of pine cones, hey, throw some of those in there. That was a good fire starter too. Hey. Uh, hmm, let's see. Oop, that fits in there, barely. Uh, scrap from my workshop. That'll get her going. Ooh. 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 Too big. Perfect. Oh. Hmm. Ambiance? Yes, please. Oh, it's so cute. Achieved. Here's my cooking hack for whether it's a solo stove or you're an open fire. Ashes. Keeping some ashes close by with your little shovel. A little bit of ashes to temper down what you got going on. It gives you the ability to control and dampen your fire. Get that exact temp you're going for. Some cod I just caught. Let's cook that up. Now we add a little bit of the old spicy chili oil because you can never have enough spice. We'll do our cod. Oh, look at that. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? Shallots and garlic. And the taters out of the steamer. Some Swiss chard, quickly braised. Plate it. That was a speedy cook presentation. Maybe could use some work, a little drizzle, some fancy sauce. But I think we nailed it. Yeehaw. Mmm, that's the best cod I've ever caught.
That has to be the fastest cook I've ever done. No, it was really fast. That thing cooked so fast, but like I managed to nail all of these. And it's fun too. Like it looked like you were having fun. Oh, I was having a blast. Mm -hmm. And that was like the second time I've cooked with the solo stove. And I managed to do it without burning a single thing overly done. Each one of these is done. Like a big cast iron pan on top of that. It's awesome. Mm hmm. As you can see, I was able to get pretty great meals out of both the Yukon and the bonfire. These fire pits are about more than that, though. It's the convenience, the ambiance, the fun, and the reliability of the smokeless fire and the ability to put it in a tighter situation like your back porch or pack it up and bring it to the beach and the versatility that it brings over digging just a hole in the ground and having a fire in that way. Which I'm not averse to, mind you, but I'd be lying if I said I wouldn't miss this when I go on a next survival challenge because for me, I love to cook. And I really feel like this opened up a whole new world of cooks for me that I can't wait to try out. In fact, I loved it so much that just a few days after opening up the Yukon, I managed to use it in two videos, one of which was the one you saw earlier. And then I had a subscriber come for a visit, Jared, and we made some beautiful lobster and mussels over the fire and fried up some of those fish that we caught. Both of these were amazing. I love the large size of the Yukon and the ability to put full size pieces of wood that I had already cut from my wood stove at home into it. I think I'll probably keep this one down at the land and for cooking down there for videos and maybe even put it out on the dock. That stainless stand that comes with them allows you to place them anywhere without burning up your porch or deck. Of course, the bigger Yukon does come with that bigger price tag but I think in a lot of cases, it's worth it. It's not that much bigger that it wouldn't fit on my back porch at home. And you could purchase the wok top for it just like you could the bonfire. But on the other hand, the bonfire does still take a fairly substantial size piece of wood. It seems to burn just about as long, as long as you're tending it. And it takes up a slightly smaller footprint, but still gives you a large cook surface when you put the wok on it. They even make a pizza oven attachment for the tops of these. I'm going to have to try one of those next. I honestly don't know if I can recommend to you one over the other, but I hopefully watching this, maybe you've heard something that helps you decide which one you might want. They're both amazing. They both have a great cook surface area if you buy one of the cooktops for it. And they're both so beautiful when you're just sitting there and enjoying it. And now that I have one of each, I don't know that I'm any closer to deciding which one I would choose if I was only ever allowed to have one. But if you got the space for it, get yourself the Yukon and the griddle or wok to go on top, maybe even the pizza oven, and you'll be loving it. But if you feel like you want to save some money and spend more money on accessories and the cooking and all of that, I would get the bonfire. You're going to love that just as much. Well, I have to say, loving the solo stove. You're going to see that in a lot more videos. Check out solo stove. Excuse me, linked in the description below. Since this is an unpaid review, they did send me these for free. Um, I don't really have anything bad to say. They do get warm on the outside. Don't rub up against it. But, I mean, like, don't rub up against any fire. That's dumb. Uh, so, so far, I, I see nothing wrong with these. These are amazing and so fun. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later. Fowler, out.